Agatha is old. I don't think that's a surprise to anyone. In spite of her age, she is still a powerful Pokemon trainer and apparently a fan favorite. So let's see if Agatha can go through the Kanto region and become the champion with hardcore Nuzlocke rules. In these games, Agatha has three ghastly evolutions on her team, but I'm going to limit myself to one. I will get a few other Pokemon in their place, but they must have been used by Agatha in a mainline game. Before we begin, check out this awesome sprite that I made, or at least altered. As good as that is, just you wait for the back sprite. And here is my trainer card, proving that I am, in fact, Agatha. Anyway, I am being kept prisoner by my own daughter because she thinks I'm too sick and old to go outside. Well, I'll show her by once again becoming a Pokemon master. I finally escape from this prison they call a house, but I'm promptly rounded up by Old Man Oak. Who does he think he is bossing me around like that? By the way, some of the colors might be a little bit off, mostly arrows pointing to exits and exclamation points. This just kind of happened when I swapped around some of the palettes. There are a few intentional changes though. First, aside from, you know, actually being Agatha, I get to start with a Ghastly. Second, my rival is none other than Death himself. Death looks okay, but Agatha, not so much. Give me a break, I'm not very good at this yet. The biggest change though, is that ghost moves are now based on your special attack. You see, before the physical special split, all ghost moves were physical, so they did damage based on your regular attack. But since Gengar is a special attacking beast, I wanted to use him to his full potential. To show you what I mean, Pestilence, the Ghastly, licks the Charmander, then stalls a bit to get growled. Even after two attack drops, Lick still does the same amount as before, because again, it's based on special attack. Without this change, Ghastly would never get past Brock. It would be virtually impossible. As it is, it's a simple matter to defeat death, as I prolong my life one more day. That's how you stay alive when you're old, right? You just have to fight death every day? I admire Agatha's walking around sprites again, as I make my way through Viridian Forest. So I can answer the age-old question, how many licks does it take to get to the center of this forest? Around 6, or 12 to get through the whole thing. Before I know it, it's time to face Brock. The only attacking move that Pestilence has right now is Lick, and the Geodude falls in two hits after being fully paralyzed. The Onyx does slow me down, but I also Lick him to death. I couldn't really do any other move, so you know, super great strategy. And since I only have ghost moves, I need to carefully plot my path to avoid all of the normie trainers. Having said that, I obviously get caught trying to slink past this lass. It's hard to sneak around when you have a cane. Anyway, Nightshade does nothing, but I do have Curse. And it would appear that this Jigglypuff has no non-normal attacking moves, nice alliteration there, so after a few turns, my Curse is enough to take it out. But my normal type weakness won't be a problem much longer, because as soon as I enter Mount Moon, I catch myself a Zubat. And she can hit everybody. Weakly, but she can still hit them. Then outside Mount Moon, on the other side, I get another encounter in Ekans. Three Pokemon before the second gym? Things are going really well. That's what I say to myself, until it's time to face Misty. The Staryu isn't too bad, he does survive a lick, but chooses to waste his turn. After another tongue attack, the star falls. Against Starmie, I honestly don't have a good strategy. I start with a lick and hope for the best, as a water pulse almost kills me. Okay, I realize I was not prepared for this fight at all, so I decide to stay in, sack Pestilence to bring out Pandemic the Zubat to see what she can do, which is basically nothing. I told you she can't hit very hard, and now she is also dead. At this point, I'm going to restart anyway, but let's see if Element the Ekans can snatch victory out of the jaws of defeat, whatever that means. She does win and all, which is great, but there is no way I'm giving up Ghastly so early. Time for Season 2 of Prison Break, which was objectively worse than Season 1. My new Pestilence and I head to defeat Brock. But since last time I did get a bit lucky in that fight, now I'm sure to level up against the Geodude, that way his Rock Snake dies in two hits. This time though, after catching Pandemic, I hop this fence to get an Oran Berry, which is my only hope and salvation for the Misty fight. It's not great, but it's really all I've got. My plan will be to sack Pandemic against the Starmie and hope that Ailment can come out, doesn't get confused, and finishes off the battle. It's not great, but we'll see how it goes. Once again, the Staryu poses no threat. This time he gets paralyzed and Ghastly levels up. I need all the help I can get here. The Water Pulse leaves me with just a little bit more HP and the Starmie gets paralyzed, which was absolutely perfect. Because of this, I can outspeed, take it out, and Pandemic lives to spread another day. 
I was unpleasantly surprised by how difficult that fight was. But I shouldn't celebrate too much, because death is right around the corner. Isn't he always? Ailment has a bit of a tough time here against the Pidgeotto, his natural predator. I was going to leave him in and see what he can do, and then he wastes the only healing berry we have right now. Well that's disappointing, so I swapped to Pestilence, who can't actually hurt this bird, but in turn, can't be hurt either. Instead, I forced the bird to hurt himself. Eat that. Abra falls in one lick, and after several turns of missing, and confusing the Charmander, he too falls. Last is Rattata, who also can't hurt me. The only problem is, I need to limit Pestilence, or else she could go over the level cap. Which is why after a curse, Pandemic, and then Ailment, come out to get some experience. I might as well bring Pestilence back out to confuse this rat in his time of dying. You know, just to play around with death a little bit. And if you want to avoid death, like Agatha is, be sure to subscribe to my channel, Nuzlocke Joe. I guarantee you that if you do, you will still die. Hate to break it to you, but no one can stop that. But you'll have had a more fulfilling life because you watched my videos. On the Nugget Bridge, both Pandemic and Element evolve at level 22. After meeting with Bill, I tell these kids to get off my lawn. Now it may not be my lawn technically speaking, but this is a perk you unlock when you get older. The ability to simply yell at kids. Stupid millennials and their avocado toast. On this boat, Death strikes again. This time, he tries to throw me overboard. But Death, just like all of us mortals, was completely destroyed by Pandemic. I didn't intend Pandemic to sweep his whole team, especially not after the smoke screen at the start, but she did such a good job that I couldn't bring myself to swap her out. Before facing Surge, I need to replenish my berry stash. Remember, because Ailman ate a berry when it wasn't needed, and I'm giving him one more chance. He better not ruin it. My plan here is to see if Ailman can win this one, because he has Dick. Which did not take out the Voltorb like I had hoped, but that's okay. Shockwave doesn't do too much. And after some healing, the Pokeball is spent. The Pikachu actually does fall in one hit, which isn't surprising, because I'm seven levels higher than he is. The Raichu outspeeds to double team, as Dig does a decent amount. Bite was really weak, so that was a wasted turn. And after two shockwaves, Arbok still isn't healing. In this game, I think that healing berries don't activate until the end of the turn, which ends up being a good thing, because I get to save that citrus berry for another day. Good job, Ailment. You've redeemed yourself for stealing the first berry. As I'm wandering around in Rock Tunnel, old people get lost a lot, right? Pestilence finally evolves. I've always liked Haunter's design way more than Gengar, but I can never bring myself to keep him because Gengar is so much stronger. I'm gonna skip Lavender Town for now, even though it's basically Agatha's home. Instead, I go to the underground path in Celadon and walk around on super speed. I forgot to get a bike, so here I am, stuck with my own two feet. I could have done this earlier, but now it's a decent time to force Pandemic to evolve, growing even more deadly. With her newfound powers, defeating Erica should be a cinch. In this generation, Fly is barely stronger than Wing Attack and it has a chance to miss, especially after being paralyzed. So I decide to stick with wing attack. I mean, I could have given her a Chesto Berry to heal the paralysis, but it really doesn't matter. There is no way she's losing this fight, considering that she resists or quad resists all of Erica's moves. Even after being fully paralyzed and hit multiple times, Pandemic comes out on top with nary a scratch. On my way out of the gym, I confront Albert because he's being a creep. He was always a peeping Tom. Then I meet up with this friend who I haven't seen in 30 years. I thought she was dead already. She invites me for tea and to play bridge. The object of which is to build a stable bridge with playing cards or something like that. As much as I wanna to go to the creepy Pokemon tower, we have a surprise there. I first need to break into the rocket hideout so I can see ghost Pokemon. You know, aside from pestilence, I suppose. And I bet I could run team rocket better than Giovanni anyway. Just look at this young whippersnapper. He's not mature enough. Pestilence decides to just straight up punch the rock snake, who survives the first hit, but not the second. Ailment comes out against the Kangaskhan and hits a super pathetic bite. Okay, time to swap to Pandemic, who slowly whittles away at this girl's health. Kangaskhans are actually pretty tanky. Pestilence makes a return on the Rhyhorn and punches him out of existence. What'd I tell you? I could easily take over this dude's organization. Now we do head to the Pokemon Tower, which is Agatha's favorite place. I mean, she's so old, She's basically a ghost herself. And speaking of, Death once again appears, this time to try and push me off the roof. Pandemic did such a good job avoiding Death last time, so let's see if she can do it again. The Pidgeotto falls to a wing attack and fly, the Execute to a wing attack, and the Kadabra too. Because of the Gyarados' Intimidate, I swap to Ailment on a Thrash and hit him a few times with Secret Power. Once I get too low on health, 
Pestilence comes out to finish the job. And the Charmeleon stands no chance, of course. Now, you may have noticed during the battle that the ghost type is still not identified, even though I currently have the Sylph scope. This is likely some error that occurred when I swapped Ghost from being physical to special. I changed its position in a list, so I think that's what caused this problem. Still, it works as intended, so it's fine. Another change I made here is the ability to find a new Pokemon at the very top of the tower, Misdrevious. Unfortunately, she can't evolve in Gen 3, and I really didn't feel like going through the trouble of creating Miss Magius here, so she'll just stay as she is. In the Elite Four rematches of these games, Agatha gets a Misdrevious, so I feel like it's fair game. I need to find a way to replace the two excess Ghastly evolutions. I save this young man, who I remember when he was a snot-nosed kid. I then decide to evolve Pestilence at level 37, because Gengar is too strong to not have around. Let me prove it to you. In Silco, Death corners me once again, this time to try and push me down an elevator shaft. But Pestilence single-handedly one-shots his entire team, outspeeding all the way. All she needs is Thunderbolt and a Shadow Punch. That's it. That was way too easy. Giovanni tries to steal Team Rocket back from me, but I'm not going to give up so easily. Ailment starts off with a couple of digs to take out this Nidorino. For the Kangaskhan, Scourge the Mistrevious makes his first appearance. Unfortunately, it's fairly lackluster because that Psybeam is super weak. Still, he can't be hit by the Kangaroo, so we're all good. The Rhyhorn can hit me, but chooses not to, apparently. Last is Nidoqueen, who still doesn't take much from Psybeam, even though it's super effective. But overall, Scourge did a good job for his first appearance. For the Sabrina fight, either of my ghosts could probably sweep her team, but I decide to let Scourge give it a try, because he's new. A Shadow Ball is all I need for the Kadabra, and the Mr. Mime too. Venomoth survives the hit because he isn't Psychic type, but even a critical Psybeam leaves me with well over half health. And I had a Person Berry just in case. Alakazam also falls in a single hit. I told you my ghost could sweep the Psychic Lady. Too bad she didn't see it coming. Jumping ahead to Fuchsia, let's just do the next gym. I wanted to start with Pandemic here, but his coughings can self-destruct, so it wasn't worth the risk. Instead, Pestilence one-shots his team with Psychic. I do decide to mix it up for the Weezing though, because he has forgotten how to explode, so the worst that he can do is Sludge, which is not very strong. Pandemic, on the other hand, is also not very strong. So this is boring, and it takes a long time. Eventually, Pandemic hits enough wing attacks, and Koga finally runs out of healing items. That was not particularly enjoyable. Because I've been working so hard getting all of these badges, I take a much needed vacation on this boring island with nothing to do. But I suppose I can get the last encounter of the run, a coughing. In the Let's Go games, Agatha gains a wheezing, so I decided to use one too. To make sure I get him before he explodes, it's Master Ball time. What else am I gonna use it for? A Mewtwo? The seventh gym leader Blaine has a long history of being beaten up by Agatha. I was a bully in elementary school, way before the big war that wiped fathers off the Pokemap. Anyway, my plan here is to try and PP stall this Growlithe's Fire Blast because that move is a bit too strong, and I'm going to lower his accuracy in the process. To that end, Pollution the Weezing, that's a pretty good name, right? Starts by spamming Smokescreen, and things are working really well until the Growlithe ends up hitting me. Out comes Pandemic, who tanks the last Fire Blast and uses a Confuse Ray. She is then replaced by Scourge, who needs a few turns to set up with Calm Minds. I don't need four, but I do get a bit greedy and end up being roared away, losing all of my boosts. You gotta know when to fold them, and I apparently don't. Pandemic comes out to confuse the Fire Dog again, before swapping back to Scourge one more time. She is hit with a bite, but that's fine. The whole purpose of this strat is to decrease the possibility of Scourge getting crit with a bite. And somehow, this Growlithe decides to start hitting every single bite in spite of all the smoke I threw in his face. What the heck? This makes me waste a precious Citrus Berry before Scourge is finally calm enough to Shadow Ball the dog. That did not go quite how I had hoped. The big dog falls to a Shadow Ball, as does the fiery little Sebastian, and finally the regular Fire Horse. Still not sure how Growlithe hit three times in a row with that bite, but things still kind of worked out. Even though my vacation was remarkably unrelaxing, is that a word? There ain't no rest for the old, so we're right back at the grind again. Giovanni decides to try one last time to take Team Rocket from me, but it's obviously not going to work. You know what else isn't going to work? Boosting my stats. For this fight, Scourge only needs a single Calm Mind, but Rhyhorn won't even let me get that. With that minus two speed, there is no way Scourge can sweep his team. Okay, time for plan B. I stall a bit, allowing this Rhyhorn to make two more scary faces, ensuring that he won't use another as I swap to Pestilence. 
I was trying to give her a much needed break. After all, she's been carrying this run, but whatevs. A four times effective Giga Drain heals all the damage this Rhyhorn did. And it's time to sweep. A Shadow Ball for the Doug Trio, a Psychic for the Nidoqueen, Queen, and then the Nidoking King as well, followed by one last Giga Drain for the other Rhyhorn. Like I said, I wanted Scourge to try another gym, but Pestilence was more than capable. Before heading towards the Elite Four, I take a detour to the power plant and wander around aimlessly for a long time until I find a Magneton who has a magnet. And then, for the first time in the entire game, Ailment's Shed Skin ability activates. Man, I really wish he had Intimidate, that's a much better ability. I also return to the Pokemon Tower and steal a spell tag from a Wild Scourge. With that, Death tries one last time to take my soul before the Elite Four, but it does not go well for him. Scourge may not be able to evolve, but all he needs is a single Calm Mind, and he can eliminate all of Death's team. He uses either a Magnet Boosted Thunderbolt or a Stab Shadow Ball. Pestilence could presumably do something similar. Even after overcoming Death for the fifth time, Agatha still has one last hurdle. To truly be a Pokemon Master, she needs to defeat her old friends at the Elite Four. Lorelei is first, and Pollution starts off to take down the Dugong with two Thunderbolts, allowing her to set up the hail, which is fine by me. The Slowbro wastes his turn with Amnesia before falling to some sludge. Cloyster's special defense is crap, so she can't even survive a single Thunderbolt. I really didn't expect Pollution to make it this far to be honest, just in case he does have a flamethrower and, after being kissed by the Jinx, burns the Psychic Ice type. As good as he's doing, Lapras is probably going to be too much, unless she is immediately paralyzed. Pollution hits through the confusion and gets frozen by an Ice Beam. I had intended to explode Pollution in this battle, but I will not let him die without getting something from it. Instead, I bring out Scourge on a heal, don't care about the Confuse Ray, and defeat Lorelei with two more Thunderbolts. So you'll see in the first few fights that I am being a bit more reckless than normal, and that's because I really only need my two ghosts to beat all of these guys, so I am more than willing to lose my non-ghost Pokemon along the way. Can't be Deathless forever now, can you? Eventually it catches up to you. I take out Bruno's Rock Snake with my regular snake after a couple of earthquakes. His second Rock Snake has Earthquake, that would have killed me if it crit, but it didn't, and it gives me a safe swap into Pandemic, who responds with a Steel Wing. The Hitmonchan falls in a single fly, while the Machamp survives and tries to slow me down, but misses. The Hitmonlee also falls in a single hit. If I hadn't used the Giga Drain TM on Pestilence, I could have given it here to Pandemic, and then I wouldn't have had to leave with the Snake, but that's okay. It turns out that while I was being kept prisoner in my own home, the Elite Four Commission decided to create a robot version of me, instead of actually hiring a new Elite Four member. Automation really is coming for our jobs, huh? You'll notice that this robot Agatha actually has the same team that I do. You know, just to make it fair. Not that it really matters, because Pestilence one-shots her team with a combination of Shadow Ball, Thunderbolt, and Psychic. But hey, having the same team was cool while it lasted, right? Seeing how much better I am than their fake robot, the Commission offers me my old job back, but I decline. This time, I'm going for the very top. Lance's Gyarados, as well as the Aerodactyl, both fall in a single Thunderbolt. For the Dragonite, against my better judgment, I leave Pestilence in, who does a decent amount with Shadow Ball, before taking a pretty strong Outrage. I had intended to pivot to Pollution against this Dragon, so I do it now, get really hurt by Outrage, and respond with a Sludge. My plan had been to explode the Dragonite, you know, so that Pollution goes off in a blaze of glory, and just for fun, I do that now against the Dragonair. The last Dragonair can't stand up to Pestilence. Now you may argue that it was unnecessary swapping to Pollution in the first place, and I could have just stayed in with Pestilence. My counter to that is, who asked you? I just wanted Pollution to make a meaningful sacrifice here, it had been preordained, and who am I to mess with Destiny? And speaking of losing a life, Agatha now has to fight Death to become the new Death. Because that's also how it works, right? You beat Death enough times and you become the new Grim Reaper? I try to repeat the same strat we used last time, but his Pidgeot is having none of it. And he throws sand in Scourge's face. Okay, instead, I bring out Pestilence on a Feather Dance to shock the bird. As always, the Alakazam is scared of ghosts, and the Gyarados intimidates me, bringing my attack all the way down to minus three. It's a good thing that Ghost is now based on special attack, huh? Whoever thought of that must have been a pretty smart guy. But that's enough patting myself on the back, we have work to do. Pestilence is able to one-shot all of Death's team, besides the Charizard in the back. A Magnet Boosted Thunderbolt is not enough to take him out, 
and there is a very real possibility that Fire Blast kills me even without crit, which is exactly what happens. That's too bad. If Scourge had been able to set up with a single Calm Mind, that would not have happened, but that's okay. He comes back out to finish off the Fire Lizard with one last Thunderbolt for the win. And with that victory, Agatha transcends to become Death Incarnate. It turns out that Agatha, as strong as she is, cannot completely defy Death. Death is all around us, and try as we might, cannot be avoided, only delayed. Well, that was a depressing end. To lighten the mood before we leave, how about we play a new game called Who's Not That MVP? where I choose the least valuable Pokemon. In this video, it obviously has to go to Ailment. I hate to do this, but he didn't even have Intimidate, and I feel like most of the time, he couldn't do Squat. So, you know, he was not great. This has been the second video in the series where I'm attempting to beat the Kanto region as each member of the Elite Four. First was Lorelei, and next will probably be Lance. I know I should do Bruno soon too, but I really don't want to use him right now. He just sucks. And on that note, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next region.